I'm Mark Blackster. I'm head of the Tree of Life program at the Wellcome Sanger Institute. Our goal is to sequence the genomes of all the fungi, plants, animals and protists on this planet, both to understand how they've evolved, how they work, but also to use that information to conserve biodiversity and to promote human health. The way we're approaching this huge project of sequencing everything is by starting on a number of named projects. So one of these projects is the Darwin Tree of Life project. That project is to sequence everything that lives in, on and around the islands of Britain and Ireland. This is a collaboration with people across the UK in museums and botanic gardens and other institutes to collect specimens for us. So the botanists at the botanic gardens know where all the species of plants are. The marine biologists know where to go on the beach and where to dive in the cold waters of Britain and Ireland. And the Naturalist Museum and their army of collectors know where to go to find all the species that we need to sequence. I'm Ines Hinnisjak and I'm the sampling coordinator for the Darwin Tree of Life project at the Natural History Museum. We're currently in Millport and the idea is we want to sample a wide range of locations around Millport for marine species. Our main focus is invertebrates, um, so we're basically trying to get a snapshot of what's here so we can add it to the project um, and increase our species list. In the lab at the moment, we're actually just going through every single individual tray and we're picking out all the things that look interesting. We have an ID team who are going to ID it to the best of their ability. We then process them at the Natural History Museum and then they are sent to Sanger for whole genome sequencing if things go well. I'm Graham Oatley. I'm an advanced research assistant in the Tree of Life Core Lab. We work in a laboratory and taking the samples that we get from partners, uh, extract DNA and RNA from them and then pass them over to the sequencing team. At the moment there's no one-size-fits-all extraction protocol so the key challenge is to try and develop different extraction protocols for the different organisms that we're getting in to get the high quality genomes that we're aiming to sequence for the Darwin Tree of Life. I am Marcela Williano da Silva and I am a senior bioinformatician at the Darwin Tree of Life project. So after the sample has been sequenced, it comes to our team and we assemble the genomes of all of the species that come through. So assembly is basically the process of taking these shorter DNA sequences and finding overlaps between them with the help of computer software to build up ideally chromosomes. So genome assembly is basically like assembling a jigsaw puzzle, which varies in shapes and sizes. I'm Charlotte, I'm a PhD student in the Darwin Tree of Life project and I'm studying the evolution of butterflies and moths. Moths and butterflies are extraordinarily diverse, in fact they are 10% of all described species and in the past studies that have looked at genomic data have been limited to perhaps three species, so you can say what's true in those, but as part of the Darwin Tree of Life we've been able to sequence hundreds of these Lepidopteran species and the interesting thing that we've found so far is that Lepidopterans are kind of a story of two sides. On the one hand, most species have undergone very little change, but in a few cases they've undergone dramatic changes. They've stuck together bits of their chromosomes and then split them up again, which means their overall genome looks very different. And we're really interested in what has allowed them to avoid this constraint that the rest of Lepidopterans face. My job here at the Tree of Life is my dream job. Ever since I've been a scientist, I've wanted to understand organisms at the genomic level. And every time I looked at a new organism, I wanted to look at more. And so suddenly here, I am with some amazing colleagues able to do that, to sequence at scale across biodiversity. And that to me opens huge vistas. Rather than understanding how this one species does what it does, we're going to understand how all species do what they do. And I believe that this is going to change the way we do biology forever. Mm -hmm.